here we have this list with a bunch of numbers that are not in any particular order. To sort this list, we call numbers.sort. Now let's print it. And you can see our numbers are sorted in ascending order. What if you want to sort these items in descending order? Well, this sort method takes two parameters, key, which we'll look at later, and reverse, which we can use to change the sort order. So here we can use a keyword argument to set a value for the reverse parameter. We set this to true. And with this, you can see our numbers are sorted in descending order. So this is the basic of sorting lists. However, in addition to the sort method, we have a built-in function called sorted. As you can see, this function takes an iterable. So we can pass any iterables here and it will sort it for us. So we can pass our numbers list and this will return a new list that is sorted. So unlike the sort method, this will not modify the original list. It will return a new sorted list. So let me comment out this line and print the result of calling this function. Now let's run this program. You can see here is our new list that is sorted. And below that we have our original list that is not sorted. Also similar to the sort method. If you want to change the sort order, you can simply set the reverse argument to true. Let's run it one more time. And here's the result. Beautiful. So sorting numbers and strings is pretty easy. But what if we're dealing with a list of complex objects? For example, what if we have a list of tuples? Let me show you. So I'm going to delete everything here. Let's imagine we are building an application for processing orders, and we have this list of order items. Every item in this list is a tuple with two items, the product name followed by the price. So here's the first item. Now let's add another item with a different price. And finally, the third item. What happens if we try to sort this list? Let's take a look. So items.sort, and then we print the items. So nothing is changed here because Python doesn't know how to sort this list. In situations like this, we need to define a function that Python will use for sorting lists. Let me show you. So here I'm going to define a function. Let's call it sort underline item. This function should take an item like this tuple. There you go. And it should return a value that will be used for sorting. In this example, let's imagine we want to sort these items based on their price. So if each item is a tuple, we can get the price using square brackets of one. So we'll return item of one. So all this function does is that it takes an item and it returns its price. Now Python is dealing with a list of numbers and it can easily sort that list. Now, finally, we need to pass this function when sorting our list of items. So once again, look at the sort method. The first parameter is key. And this is where we need to pass our sorting function. So we pass sort underline item. But note that I'm not calling this function. I'm simply passing a reference to this function. When Python attempts to sort this list, the list of items, it gets each item and it will pass each item to our sort function. Okay, so let's run this program and see what happens. We get a type error. Sort takes no positional arguments, which basically means here we can only use keyword arguments. So we need to specify our argument that is key. We set it to sort item. Now let's run this program one more time. Okay, look, our list of items is sorted by the price of each item. However, the way we have implemented this sort function is a little bit ugly. There is a better way, and that's what I'm going to show you next. If you have any experience with other programming languages, you've probably heard of the term Lambda expression or Lambda function. It's basically a simple one-line anonymous function that we can pass to other functions. So here on line 12, we're passing a reference to our sort underline item function. We can improve this code and make it cleaner 
by using a lambda expression or an anonymous function. So we don't have to define this function first and then pass it here. So we remove this and add lambda. With this, we're telling Python that we're defining a lambda or anonymous function. The syntax for writing a lambda function is like this. We add parameters, colon, expression. So using this syntax, we can rewrite this function. How many parameters do we have here? Only one. So we add that here, item. Then after the colon, we should add an expression. What are we returning in our sort on an item function? We are returning item of one. So we simply add that here, item of one. Now you can see with this syntax, we don't need to use def for defining a function. We don't need to give our function a name. We don't need these parentheses here, and we don't need the return statement. So this is a shorter and cleaner way to define a function that we're going to use only once as an argument to another function. Now, let's delete these two lines, run our program again, we'll get the exact same result. Our items are sorted by their price. Hi guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. My name is Mosh Hamadani and I have tons of tutorials like this for you on my channel. So be sure to subscribe and also please like and share this video. If you want to learn Python properly from scratch with depth, I have a comprehensive Python tutorial for you. The link is below this video, so click the link to get started. Thank you and have a fantastic day.